All right, I'm off to pick up my car. It's been within 24 to 48 hours as promised. Oh my gosh, this is a... <laughs> Autopilot 1 is not the same as Autopilot 2. Anyway, uh, let's see, it's Wednesday. So yeah, 28 to 48 hours because it was ready yesterday evening, which is great. I couldn't pick it up till now. It was I got a text like 9.30 at night. Apparently, there's been a lot of confusion about the self-driving computer and the MCU2. MCU2 is here, self-driving computers above the glove box. Originally, I ordered everything, which is two services, but they told me they only had one. They didn't have the self-driving computer on the glove box available yet, and they'd contact me, and they even told me that when I dropped it off. But then in the text messaging we've been doing back and forth, they tell me that it's all together and it'll all be done. So we'll see. I'll, I'm going to check the little description here on the screen when I get there as I'll show you how to do so you can tell what you've actually got installed. Actually, I checked it on this car because I wanted to see if I had the uh, base model or the regular radio because the base model radio on the Model S is terrible. I didn't even bother turning it on. So we do what we're doing all that and uh, unfortunately the drive line they told me that I need new drive shafts there's excessive play in there and also a new clevis mount which I just had replaced less than a year ago because it's June and I think I had that done in August so I told them I'm not until we find a solution I'm not, not willing to pay for that it doesn't make any sense and they agreed with me so um, I, I told them I'd bring it back after I figure out what's going on of course, I also told them that I drive mostly highway driving and in chill mode. Actually, I gotta tell them chill mode, I gotta remind them about that. But um, I do, and I just don't understand why this stuff wears out that fast. You can't um, have to go through a clevis mountain drive shafts every six months or less in a car. It's just not sustainable. Okay, so now I follow the procedure since I'm here, and I tap on this little link they sent me, which is a touchless delivery service because we're in COVID-19. I don't know if they'll keep this any longer than that or not. And I basically sign in, and they call me back and let me know what I got to do. Now, in case you're wondering, this is how you tell what you have in your car. Push the car here, push software, push additional vehicle information, and then it tells you, as you can see, what this car is the... 1.0 autopilot computer, air suspension, base audio system, uh, infotainment processor NVIDIA Tegra, and front and rear motors. It talks about them as well. All right, so it took just a couple minutes for them to get back to me, and I'm going to go and drop the key off in the night box, just put the key in the night box over there, and they're gonna drive my car around, and they got me the referral credits for everything, and great experience overall, except for the drive shafts, but that's a separate issue, we just, as we know, and one that's probably not repairable, unfortunately. Oh, and I did confirm again actually that the uh, self-driving computer is not yet installed it's just the hardware two, hardware was it 3.0 or 2.5 or whatever it is a new center screen so I still need to come back for that all right well here's a new screen it's like I got a software update that I need already and let's see Oh, actually, maybe it's just a new computer. The screen is still yellowed. Uh, well, so it's not a new screen. It's just an MCU. And let's take a look at this. Infotainment processor, Intel Atom. Well, we'll see right away how the maps do, right? Oh, hmm. Maps don't seem to be doing that much different. I wonder if the radio, what happened with the radio? Streaming. Well, 
And we did have this software update. Still, hmm, still spinning. Not as fast as I would have thought, and hmm, interesting. Oh, this is interesting. The calibration in progress. See that? Well, maybe they're wrong, but this also says full self driving computer in here. <laughs> I don't know who's right, who's wrong. It's crazy. The lack of knowledge. Of course, not only do they not know about this, but they're not going to know about what's going on with the drive line and that it's unfixable either. I mean, they just may not even know. Now, with the replacement of the computers, I'm wondering about what it's done with my suspension settings, about, you know, based on GPS settings, where I am, if the suspension remembers where I am, because right now it looks like it's not resetting. Like this, this, I'm in an area of driving where I had it set for certain suspension settings, and it seems like it's not remembering any of them. So I think that all might be gone with this computer replacement. And again, it looks like I had both computers replaced, not just the one. Okay, right now it's not letting me, I guess, till it calibrates. You see that wheel? It's spinning around the wheel. It looks like that's the calibration gauge. You can see the progress. There's the wheel I'm talking about. You see how it's getting more and more of a blue circle? around that wheel. I guess when it gets all the way around that wheel, the calibration will be complete. And I did notice some things going faster, especially when I'm bumping up with this radio. It looks like I lost all my radio settings too. I think all the suspension settings, all the radio settings. Yeah, it looks like everything. So, And I need to get a new plan now for the suspension what I'm going to do in terms of... Um, just how everything works going forward with if I start to reprogram my car like I had done <laughs> where I was in high suspension settings to keep the tires from being worn out if I do my solution where I'm gonna not have to worry about the tires being worn out anymore and lower the car I'm not gonna want it to automatically raise and lower as it has been so I'll lose all those features for sure and it looks like that's what's gonna happen <laughs> Calibration is almost complete as you can see. Alright, it's done. Look at all those cones. Whoa! I got cones too. Look. Will it work in a construction site? Auto steer not enabled. Okay, I gotta turn that on. I gotta do that. But look, I'm seeing cones. That's that's great. I've never seen that before. And they appear to be accurate. Okay, turn that on. Turn that on. Turn that on, turn that on. Uh, no. Can't do anything with that. Traffic light stop and control beta. I guess that's not available to me yet. But everything else is turned on now. Maybe with this new software upgrade, I'll get to get that as well. So let me also show you that this is, yeah, some of these functions are definitely working better. Some of this, like, this never works this smooth and fast. This is working well. This did not work like this in the past. Per, so some things are much better. Maybe it needs to be calibrated. I don't know. Let's try out autopilot now and see how it does. All right, autopilot's working now. Very good. Hopefully it's smarter and better, faster. Quicker reaction times, right? Hopefully. It shows the traffic lights there. You can see them. 
showing that they're green as I'm going through. Let's see, here's, some, here's another set of traffic lights we're approaching. Whoa, that car, oh, that car almost was in my lane. Sorry, I didn't get any of that because that car almost hit me. I don't know if you can see the traffic light thus far, but it's red, obviously. It doesn't show it. Yeah, it does show it. I can see it just barely in that screen. You can see that it's red. I'll zoom in. Well, just barely, but yeah, you can see it's there, right? Yeah. That's nice to have. Okay, so for my short overall review here of the upgrade to uh, hardware 2.0 and full self-driving computer 3.0, I think is what these are, but you know what I'm talking about. You're getting the new MCU and you're getting the the new full self-driving computer, you're going to lose all your settings. And I don't know which is which because I had all of them done here. It's definitely faster. You got more visualization. You got all the updates. So that's cool. And I, and of course, you got sentry mode. I got I to gotta turn that on right now. But thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Hit the thumbs up and the bell for notifications. And we'll see you in the next video. Sentry mode. It won't let me turn it on. That's interesting. All right, I'm updating from 2020.20.1 to 2020.20.12. So let's go ahead and install that right now. Oh yeah, I also have to adjust this in the vehicle. Got to turn on the automatic doors. Close all with key fob. Walk away door lock, mirror auto fold, all that. None of those things are set, so we got to set those. And even auto wipers. All right, I need to add a little bit on to the end of this video to let you guys know that since I did the software update. I have 2020.20.12. It asked me to name my car, which of course I did, a digital nomad. And at that point, it looks like it, it got me back. Mike, I'm back here. It looks like all my settings are back, including suspension settings. Because there it looks like auto raising location. And what about radio? Let me see radio. Let's see. Yes, it looks like favorites radio, everything. It's all back. Do you see that? All back. So it looks like I didn't lose any settings at all. It just took some time to recover them. That's it. One last little bit about this upgrade is I'm wondering about the screen. As you can see, I've got my older yellowed screen. It did say for the $2,500 I paid that it included a new touch screen, which would have to be this. So I'm Looking into what happened with Tesla, they're going to get back to me, and I may need to do a follow-up video. I may need to go back for a new screen. They may have just forgotten it. I don't know. Who knows?